Okay, so there's this really cool thing that Steven Universe does that not a lot of people have tried, and that's assign a specific instrument to each of the main characters. Uh, now, this isn't exactly new. Everybody's seen the Disney cartoon set to Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf, where Peter's the string section, the bird's a flute, the duck's an oboe, cat's a clarinet, grandfather's a bassoon, the hunters have timpani for their gunshots, and the wolf is the French horns. Now, for the most part, people remember the themes from this piece, and not necessarily the representation of characters in the instruments, which is kind of a shame because by not completely relying on the thematic material of your piece to represent your character in the narrative, you give yourself more flexibility while still maintaining a specific tone for your character. So, for example, is your character small? Then maybe a flute works really well, so no matter how angry or intimidating your character gets, it's still small and it's still just a flute. But I have yet to see a popular TV show go as far as Steven Universe when it comes to this technique. So all the main characters have instruments associated with them. Garnet is a bass synth. Amethyst is electric drums. And Pearl is a piano. Rose quartz is often represented by strings or at the very least a violin. and Greg Universe has been seen literally holding a guitar. Steven's instrumental identity isn't really an instrument so much as it is a palette, but you often hear chiptune being played alongside Steven, kind of calling back to the 80s and 90s when most of the 20-somethings watching this show were still Steven's age. But it also reflects how Steven doesn't really fit in super well. Chiptune is really a musical palette unto its own. Uh, it really isn't embraced by the academic world, and you don't hear it on the radio a whole lot either. Uh, kind of how Steven sits in between the gem world and the human world. But the really cool thing that this show does is how they use the instrumental color palette that they created. So, like, whenever characters fuse, they play the character's representative instruments, and then use both of those instruments as an identity for the newly created character. Opal? That's Sugalai? You got it, baby. Hey, Steven, wanna see something cool? This is the lovely Sardonyx coming to you alive from the soon-to-be former communication hub. What a beautiful day! <gasps> Who are you supposed to be? But it isn't just a mechanical technique. Uh, how these instruments act actually reflect the character's personality in the show. Okay, so like, uh, take Garnet for example. She's a strong, silent type, to put it mildly. She always seems to keep everything together, carry the team in a fight. Not dissimilar to how a bass actually works in music theory. Most, if not all music theorists, can rant for days on end as to how the bass note is the most important note when determining harmony. Just like how Garnet is the backbone of the team, the bass is the backbone of the harmony. Similarly, Amethyst makes the most sense as percussion. Given that in most senses the percussion governs the speed at which a piece moves. Uh, how many times have you seen Amethyst get frustrated that the group is sitting around and not doing anything and needed to get a move on? Let's ambush them! And finally, speaking as a piano player, Pearl makes the most sense as a piano. Um, when you're in music school, you have to take lessons with your instrument, but you also have to be in an ensemble. Now for most instruments, you can just join a wind ensemble or an orchestra and it's fine, but as a piano player, you have to do accompanying. <sighs> See, most, if not all, instruments need a piano to accompany them in order to offer harmonic background for them to perform really well. So all the piano students have to accompany all the other students in the building with their solo pieces. Namely, you get to be their bitch while they blame you for every mistake they make, all while you never happen to see them in a practice room. For the most part, you become their musical assistant just like a pearl, except for one musical couple that I saw. Uh, my piano professor and one of the violin professors at my school happened to be married, and every time you saw them play, it wasn't really an accompaniment. See, a lot of the time, the soloists would just blast along through their pieces, and you were expected to follow the best that you could, even though they said that that's not really how it's supposed to go. Um, if you happen to get a nicer soloist, then they'd be more willing to meet you in the middle, but with those two professors, you could tell that the violinist was listening to the piano just as much as the piano was listening to the violin, and that was the first time I ever saw a piano and a violin play as a duet. But for the jazz musicians out there, this might seem like a really familiar group of instruments. See, in jazz, a piano, a bass, and a drum set make up what's called the rhythm section. And the entire point of the rhythm section is exactly what it sounds like. They support the band. The bass and the piano combined lay out the harmonic foundation, while along with the drum set, keep everyone in time. Just like how the crystal gems support Steven as he grows and develops as a gem himself. Now this could have been cooler if Steven was like a saxophone or something, because then you could say that together they make a really nice jazz combo. But speaking as someone who tried to write all his electronic pieces with chiptune sounds, that took a lot of flack for it not sounding sophisticated or complex enough, maybe the chiptune's fine. Maybe the chiptune sounds fine over a rhythm section. Maybe we don't have to change the chiptune, and maybe it's you that needs to get used to the chiptune and just be cool with the chiptunes getting married to each other. I'm sorry, where was I?
Okay, yeah, so um, more about the instrumental relationships. So like getting back to jazz. Uh, so in a rhythm section, you can sometimes use a guitar, but that poses a problem. See, the drums keep the beat, the bass lays down the harmonic foundation, but both the guitar and piano comp chords, or just play chords over the top of everything else. But because jazz is so dense and complicated, the piano and the guitar typically can't play at the same time and are often at odds. I won't get into the really complicated stuff, but long story short, if the piano player likes the chords to go in one direction and the guitar wants them to go in the other, then the two kind of clash. More often than not, at least in my experience, you either have the piano or the guitar playing. Like, when I played in combos and in bands, the guitar player and I would agree on when we were playing and when we'd sit out and let the other person play. Kinda like we were divorced parents and the music was our child. And that's pretty much it. I mean, if I were to have any criticism of any kind, I kind of wish there was more of this. Like, with the newer characters, they kind of have their own instruments. Like, a lot of times you hear, like, Celesta with Lapis Lazuli, or, like, Bismuth has this really distorted electric guitar sound. But that might be because Bismuth is a heavy metal. But a lot of the time you hear these individual instruments within an arrangement, instead of just by themselves. Which leads a lot of people to think that these characters have their own genre of music instead of just an instrument. And I don't know, I kind of like what they did with the original gems. Uh, besides, genres are kind of hard to identify and merge together, and they can get really complicated really fast. Um, like if they continued the pattern with Ruby and Sapphire, where Ruby was like a double bass and Sapphire was a synthesizer pad or something, so that when they fused together they literally became a new instrument, kind of to show how Garnet isn't just a fusion but is really her own character at this point. Uh, but really, this show is just filled with musical gems. Uh, like Steven is often seen with the ukulele. Maybe that's because he's a smaller version of his dad. Or like in The Answer, the only time Ruby and Sapphire really harmonize while singing is at the very end when they become Garnet. <laughs> I gotta say, out of every show out there, be it on television or the internet or whatever, this show has me the most excited as to what they're gonna do next with their music.